When you talk about adventure, when you talk about taking the road less travel, you think of probably doing it on a Royal Enfield motorcycle. Big engine capacity, healthy number of torque, big tank and the comfort makes it a motorcycling want. And for years now, Royal Enfield has become a sort of a brand for touring purists. But why would a manufacturer take one step ahead and do something genre specific? Not because they can, because they chose to. So here we are to witness a bike that has been built for purpose. Let's find out. The idea was that we should build motorcycle punches round up meant for Himalayas. Purpose built the product stream, presenting to you the Himalayan. Alright, here I have with me Sergeant Sheldy and commutator Satin Pujari. Sergeant, with you first, you have the spec sheet in your hand, you are smiling. What are your first impressions? Uh, I am very impressed. I, ha I have to admit that I have never been so excited to uh, swing my leg on a Royal Enfield as much as this one because uh, there is no fluff surrounding it. I mean, it's very clean, the design is really simple and the beauty is in the simplicity, right? It's a very purpose-built motorcycle, it has long travel suspension. 220 mm of clearance using the 21 inch front wheel but the seat height is still the same as the Continental GT also this one is uh, lighter than the Continental GT even though it has a bigger tank you have the other jerry can options as well where you can carry more fuel it's heartening to see an Indian company you know taking the plunge and getting us a motorcycle which is made for adventure if you look at the commuting uh, perspective what do you have to say? It's a nice dichotomy that Royal Enfield has. Uh, people either love Royal Enfields for longer distance riding, whereas it does not have any equipment as such to comfort it. And then there are those people who only hate Royal Enfield for not progressing. With this motorcycle, they have changed that. It's a completely new engine platform, very compact 410cc engine. The effort that has gone into making this into a very livable bike, an everyday bike, is quite commendable. So the saddle height is uh, not too high, the ground clearance is adequate. There is this clarity with Royal Enfield that they want this motorcycle to be the only motorcycle that you buy. So it can be a motorcycle that will uh, cater to the first time uh, or like they said the in-closet adventure tourists yep. who can use this as their daily bike at the same time or, or when they feel adventurous they can ride it to mountains. So that is quite impressive. In the sense, you have had the 350s, right? You also have the 500, the 535cc engines. Why 400? Uh, this new engine uh, looks like a very compact engine, much more modern design. Right. So I'm assuming that uh, because of the long travel suspension and uh, the way this bike is now designed, they, uh, with this compact engine, they are able to achieve a shorter wheelbase, right. and which which makes it a much more livable bike, right? Correct. I guess that's why they are moving away from that engine platform. But then we have heard rumors of a parallel twin engine. Now this chassis is actually a perfect fit for that. Royal Enfield has gone on to claim that uh, there's one oil change at 10,000 kilometers and just one spark plug change at 25,000 kilometers. This is the first one which gets uh, overhead camshafts. Uh, it's the first one which gets an oil, oil cooler. cooler. So it doesn't get liquid cooling, but it does have an oil cooler and a counterbalance as well to, okay. for in terms of refinement. How how well is it working? We look. We can only say after we actually ride the motorcycle. But looking at the specs, it does look impressive. Uh, but the one thing which I thought was missing is it it's carburetor. It doesn't get a fuel injection. What's about that? With EFI, there are two things. One, it's expensive to maintain, it's a, it adds to the cost. Secondly, with carburetor, you have uh, an option to fine-tune it whenever you go climb higher altitudes. There's a conscious effort to keep the costs low. Like you will see the front disc being Biber and unbranded and not Brembo as Continental GT has it, right? So I believe uh, the whole idea here is to keep the cost as low as possible so that uh, it can really uh, compete well against the uh, maybe the Duke 390s of sort. It doesn't really have any competition as such, you know, 400cc second. Duke 390 is not really, I mean, you can, as you said, you can even go conquer uh, Kardungle on Chetak, right? Baja Chetak. But the point is, you have a purpose built motorcycle now which does that. Safety wise, uh, the absence of ABS, I, I mean, it 
could be with a price point in mind. Correct. Not everyone can follow KTM's and Bajaj's uh, footsteps because uh, it does add to the cost of fair bit. But I think it would have been a welcome addition. It would have made it more. I know on the adventure side, you don't really want ABS, but not everyone's going to be taking it off road. A lot of people will be using it even for long distance touring, and ABS would have been really handy as an option. But then the braking unit is really nice. I think it's the same exact unit from the Continental GT which we loved. So that's good to see. I'm sure you the braking on this looks really promising. It's great to see that our Indian manufacturer was the one who headed in this direction. And it looks like a really fantastic product. For once, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to ride it and ride up the mountain because I've never been there. When you are taking it out in an adventure, you need to have accessories. What do you think of Royal Enfield providing the list of accessories that they are? Oh, there's a ton of accessories and uh, the best part is that all blend in seamlessly with the bike. So, the jerry can, uh, the, the riding gear as well. Correct. And these are not uh, like a compromise. They are actually Revit uh, accessories, right? Yeah. It's quite a respectable brand that way. And uh, I'm pretty sure Royal Enfield would price it aggressively as well. So, you enter a showroom, you not only buy a bike, but you buy the entire accessory kit, the entire experience, right? That's, that's quite a neat thing that Royal Enfield does. A lot of positive energy around, uh, the prize has not been announced, it gets announced in March. We wait till then, we wait for the bike to arrive at our headquarters so that we can test it out, we can belt it out, test its metal. This is me signing off with Sagar and Satyan from the launch of the Royal Envy Himalayan. See ya.